Hi, and welcome to The Weekly, your source for the trends and innovations we're seeing in the commercial construction market. This week, we're doing a special show. It's all about multifamily. And multifamily construction is going to be down a little bit in 2021, but expect a rebound in 2022. So now is the time to plan for that. Our sponsor today is Safety First Fire Rated Glazing Solutions. And their mission is to bring appealing architectural products that protect people. In addition to that, they deliver to you expert advice, economic solutions, and unlimited inspiration. You can check out all their products at safety.com. So BD&C, they just finished their third multifamily amenities research study. So what does it mean? Because this is the first one since COVID. What's changed and what's changed for good? Rob Cassidy interviews three experts in this area that bring color to the metrics. Today, I have a, a trio of experts from three distinguished architecture firms in this country. We have Stephanie Kirkpatrick, IIDA, ASID, Lead AP. She's the Principal and Director of Interior Design at Niles Bolton Associates out of Atlanta. We have Jeff Mulcrohn, who's uh, an Associate and Director of Design He's an AIA member and lead AP at BSB Design in the beautiful city of Chicago. And Vicky Alani, AIA, who's uh, with CBT in Boston, uh, principal and, uh, and head of uh, multifamily and hospitality. So welcome everybody to our discussion today about COVID's impact on multifamily amenities. Uh, we just completed a, a survey of 332 respondents across the uh, multifamily field. Uh, and uh, it's the third time we've done this survey, but the first time we've done, obviously, this COVID question. And so how have, how have amenities in multifamily been impacted by COVID? And that was the, uh, the basic uh, question we asked. And then we got a lot of interesting verbatims, and we're going to talk about those. But uh, just to give some of the data points, one is that the majority of respondents said that they didn't change their amenities in any way, 53% or 54%, which was kind of amazing. However, uh, some of them did, about 10%, 11% did take stuff out. Some 33%, one out of three, modified their amenities package. Some 15% added and 13%, one in six, is that or so, one in seven, said that they uh, innovated in some way. So those were the major findings, but uh, there were some really juicy and interesting uh, verbatims of, of what people did. And uh, we're gonna talk about those. So uh, I, I think one of the big findings, uh, and I'd like all of you to start to jump in here is uh, heavy emphasis on outdoor spaces. What did, what did you, what, how did you read that? And what are you all doing about that in your practices? I think it's a huge uh, draw right now. I think it's all about the seamless, movement between outdoor and indoor living. Mm -hmm. I think that the with the advent of robust Wi-Fi that's available outside, um, with things like adjustable louvers and things like that that are over outdoor grilling areas and those sorts of things that can control light to some degree, control uh, moisture as well. I think it's a huge, huge um continuing to grow trend. And I don't yeah. think it's going away. The research is showing us COVID has changed things. And those amenities that are going into multifamily dwellings, they're changing fast. And just as an aside, the two words that I'm sick and tired of, COVID mm -hmm. and virtual. Mm -hmm. So I need to figure out how to eliminate them from my vocabulary. Special shout out to our sponsor, Safety First. They bring protection 
to all areas of your project, including doors, openings, walls, and floors. So check out their full offerings at safety.com. If you missed any of our past segments, they're available on Horizon TV and on YouTube. And if you have any suggestions for the show, please email me. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a wonderful week and a safe one, of course. And we look forward to seeing you next Thursday. Thank you very much.